Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in, welcome in, Winning Cures Everything. I'm Gary. I'm Chris. I am John. Johnny the Fish is in. John Roser, uh, producer extraordinaire, is here, and I'm producing. I don't know how this is happening. Oh, I, I like this. It's a, it's a change for me. <laughs> it's a change for me. You're behind the ones and twos. Believe that. All right, this is the NFL Big Game Previews. Jam that sweet music. All right, let's jump into this. It is week five. We did terribly last week, but you can hear more about that over on the Gambling Picks segment of the show. In the NFL? We didn't do terribly in the NFL. What oh, no, no, no. It was college about? football that we did. Yeah, NFL. I took I, a like, bloodbath in college, but... Yeah. No. NFL, I went 4-1. and one. I felt good about that. Yeah, I but, went, yeah. I went what, 2-3-2? Two, three and two? Yeah, I did fine. Yeah, you did okay. did okay. Well, I went 4-1, and one, lost my biggest bet of the week. That's okay. My, my $75 one. I hit all four of my $50 oh. ones. That's, that's my problem this year. All right. Anyway, you can find us over at winningcureseverything.com. You can go over and uh, visit Tunica at tunicatravel.com. They bring us the show every week. They've got six incredible sports books. You can find more information on them. Tunicatravel.com. Let's fire into this. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, hit subscribe for us. Share the show out. Tell your buddies about it. Comment on the show. Tell us what you like, what you don't like, all those wonderful things. Last week's picks winner was Boss Hog. Oh, and, oh. I, and I don't know where no, Boss Hog know. is from. A hog doesn't bark either. I don't know what I was doing there. No, that was a... Yeah. I'd love to hear you make a, a pig noise. Like, let's try that. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Here we go, Boss Hog. Boss Hog is uh, is in the house. And he could have been. He was he was close to being able to call the hogs, too, last weekend. He got, weekend. Right. He got That's, close. Which is just so ridiculous. I'd, anyway. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into the NFL big game previews so that we are not here forever. Of course, we're recording on Tuesday night. Let's jump into matchup number one. This is the Sunday afternoon slot. This is the prime time. This will be the most watched game of the weekend. The Dallas Cowboys and the Green Bay Packers coming at you from AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas, 325 p.m. Central Time, God's Time Zone on Fox. Total is 46 and a half. Cowboys are a three and a half point favorite. Dak Prescott has come back down to earth. Is that the best way to say that? Well, I mean, you don't get to play the Giants and the Redskins in the in the you know Dolphins every week. That's true. I mean, I think you I think you got to give a lot of credit to to New Orleans, and you know that defense with Drew Brees out, that defense is going to have to be stout because that that's a team that's not going to be able to put up. Thirty, you know, like they had the thirty-three against the the Seahawks, but it, defensive touchdown, a return for a touchdown, yeah. like you know, TJ Br- T- uh, Teddy Bridgewater is not going to be out there putting up thirty-five points a game. So that defense is going to have to be big while Breeze is out, and they were up to the challenge. Like Dallas, you got to think. I mean, they, I mean, they got to get Zeke going this week against Green Bay because I mean, credit New Orleans, they they were ready for it, and they were, I mean, they were ready. Zeke did not have a great day. Nobody did for Dallas. He scored ten no. freaking points. Nobody had a great day for the Cowboys. Scored a touchdown and well, didn't no, win the game. Scored yeah. the only touchdown. Nobody has ran the ball on the Packers. Yeah, and that's, that's going to be interesting. So I mean, to this point, nobody's got the ground game going yet. Well, and you've got two teams. They're, one of these teams is walking out on Sunday taking their second straight loss. Yeah, that's right. Green Bay's coming off the home loss to Philly, and then obviously the Cowboys lost to the Saints Sunday Well, I night. guess Philly did run on them pretty good. They had two running yeah, backs that ran but, a lot. But it was, it was mostly Carson Wentz. Like, they, they threw to set up the run. It wasn't, it wasn't what Dallas would like to do, right? Oh, no. It's the opposite of what Dallas wants to do. So that's where this gets really interesting because this, this would be a prime spot to bet on either one of these teams is coming off of the lowest point of the season. You buy them when they're at their lowest. Well, right now... You get them both that way. Yeah. So I think it's a little more even there. Uh, 46 and a half seems like it might be a little high. These are two really good defenses. Really good defenses. Really good. I mean, that, well, that's the thing. We talked about New Orleans beating Dallas. Like, Dude, Dallas did not give up a touchdown. Like, they did not yeah. give up a touchdown in the game. You know that Dallas defense is really good. Now... Aaron Rodgers has given Cowboys fans nightmares in that stadium before. So, oh yeah, that that is that's I always don't something that to worry this about. Is the real Aaron Rodgers that we're used to seeing. I, I just don't. That guy's not the same person. If he doesn't score on the scripted first quarter plays, he doesn't score. That's been their mo the entire season. 
I don't think that's changing this week. I think this is the best defense outside of the Bears that they are going to play up to this point. I. Are you? Let, let's go ahead and get into picks. Come on. Are you going to go with the Packers? No. Okay. I was. <laughs> I was just talking about. How I, know. I don't think Aaron Rodgers is going to. Score. I know, but I, I just. Why I, would that make you lean that way? Well, no, because you were talking about he'll score on the scripted point. Well, he will score on the scripted plays. There's no it, doubt they'll score the first quarter. So no, at that no point, question. If if Dak can't score on nah, them, that, that that Packers defense is really good. They're not great. Okay. They're really good. They're not great. Zeke has to get going. And he hadn't really yet. Yeah, so, yeah, but this is about time where, yeah. all right, you normally get four spring training games to get up to health. He's had four regular season games to get going. Now it's time to unleash him. You got to let him go. I, I'm i going to go with the Packers. Go and I think they're going to win the game outright because Aaron Rodgers does break their heart. It seems like regularly. He's like, done it a couple times. He's yeah. done it three or four times to them. I, I he's done it way more to Bears fans, but he, he, he was, has he has done it to the Cowboys all the fans. Time. I just don't think this is the same Aaron Rodgers. I, I'm kind of with you. I don't think it's the same Rodgers now. He still makes a couple of throws a game where you're like, oh, my God, dude, how did you do that? Oh, 100%. Where he's like across his body and he just looks like he flicks his wrist and the ball goes 40 yards oh, the opposite insane. way right into a dude's arms. It's like, what in the hell was that? <laughs> um, you know, I do have the nickname of Johnny First Half. Under 23 in the first half between these two teams. Under 23 in the first half. All right. So I can even with, with Rodgers scoring all his first points, I would, I would have guessed that this would be a high scoring first half and no points in the middle. I think it's, I think it, I think we're looking at a, nothing in the second half. Oh, I think we're looking at a 10 to 7, 13 to 7 game at halftime. Maybe. I can believe that. Yeah. I mean, these are two stout defenses. Uh, let's move into the next big game. And it's Thursday night. The Rams at the Seahawks. Seahawks, a one-and-a-half point favorite. Total is 49 on this at 7.20 p.m. Thursday on Fox CenturyLink Field in Seattle, Washington. Russell Wilson, man. Uh, I think he's he kind of got going last week. They didn't put up a ton of points on the Cardinals. But they looked really good. I mean, they, they got their uh, their tight end moving along. They Jadavion Clowney. Uh, pick six. Yeah, you got a touchdown. Yeah. So yeah, I am. I like the Seahawks here a lot. The Rams. Now, what did you told me that the underdog has covered or not covered? The underdog one has one underdog outright. has one outright every Thursday night every game. Thursday. Green Bay over Chicago, Tampa Bay over Carolina, Jaguars over the Titans, and then Eagles over the Packers. The underdog has won outright every Thursday night NFL game. See, it, it makes me. Makes me wary because I know the ask, Rams are good. Ask Gary how much I think that matters. He's. I don't care about trends like that because these two teams are totally different teams. Are yeah. nothing like those other teams. They, <laughs> yeah. they, have, they have nothing in common to any of those other teams. So I never care about those trends. No, I do. I know, but yeah. I mean, look to me. That doesn't mean I'm good at I'm, this. I'm biased in this game. Um, both of these teams being NFC West teams. As a 49ers fan, I, I despise both of these teams, but I do not despise the Rams nearly as much as I despise the Seattle Seahawks. <laughs> My least favorite team, probably in all of sports, I cannot stand the Seahawks. So I'm very biased here, and I would take the Rams no matter what. But again, super biased. I'm wondering if if the Rams are just being sold really low because I, I feel like the way that these teams have gone all season, that the Rams should be favored here. I disagree. I watched this team in person. I didn't think they were that good. I did. That was that was the worst played game I've ever seen from a team in person. This Cleveland Browns team played the worst possible game they could, and they were this close to beating that team. That that was the worst you're getting, and they barely came away with a win. I, I just, what we talked about last week, Mike Lombardi talked about how Winning hides flaws. Yeah, I I think they got exposed by the Bucks last week. I don't know that they are exposed to a point where they're not going to make the playoffs or anything. Like they're still really good. Sean McVay is still a genius, but but I think divisional game. They're going up to Seattle Thursday night. I'm going to ride with the Seahawks. I I just think this Rams team is massively flawed. I think they have an elite player in Aaron Donald. I think everybody else that is supposed to be elite level, it's just not there. Cooper See, Cup is incredible. Robert Woods is incredible. 
Jarrett Goff looks like he doesn't know where he's throwing the football. What what you just said about winning hides flaws is exactly what I think about when I think about the Seahawks. I yeah, mean, they, they beat, beat the Bengals bad, by they one. They beat them bad teams. Yeah, they, they beat, well, but they didn't even beat up on them, right? So they, they beat the Bengals by one. They beat the Steelers after Roethlisberger got knocked out by two. Okay. Uh, granted, it was on the road. It was a, a noon game, whatever. But then they come back, they get beat by the Saints who are without Drew Brees, and then they beat just a hapless Cardinals team, which my under five and a half, looking super fresh on that one. Um, I I think I'm I think I'm gonna go Rams. Yeah, like I I think that the Rams are the better team here. No, they they probably did not look great in person by any stretch of the imagination, but I think they're still probably better than Seattle. Yeah, and and, and I th- this is where I also lean the Rams because it w- just because of what we've seen from them the last couple of years, and we still do believe they're a, not as good as maybe they were the last two years, but still a good football team and a playoff yes, team in the NFC. I agree with that. Yeah. Okay, I coming off that. a loss. If you're really a good team, you bounce back in well, this now, spot. Now, I will say, I will give the coaching edge to the Rams all day long. Pete Carroll does look like he's kind of out of his league. He looks so good, people forget. That guy's like 71. Like, he's the same yeah. age as but Like, he's an old man. He just looks good. I think some of those old man faculties are starting to, starting to affect him. Starting to rear their ugly head, huh? All right, let's I move into. So. Screw the Seahawks. <laughs> let's move into the next one. Sunday night football. The Indianapolis Colts coming off of a ugly, horrendous, nasty loss at home to the Raiders, going to Kansas City, going to Arrowhead Stadium, 7.20 p.m. on NBC. The total is 56 and a half. The Chiefs are favored by 11 points. Yes, sir. That is a massive, massive line um, for, for two teams that have the bulk of their team. Like, this is not the Jets or the Dolphins or, or a team that lost their quarterback, or they did forever ago, but Jacoby Brissett has proven that he is a viable oh, He is an above-average quarterback yes. in the NFL right now. He's well within the top 15 of quarterbacks in the NFL. Now, to be fair, last year in the playoffs with Andrew Luck in this same stadium, the Chiefs absolutely beat the dog crap out of the Colts. Playoff game. I know playoff games are different. Totally different. But it does make me wonder. That Chiefs team is totally different than this Chiefs team is also. But this Chiefs team kind of has a little bit of a defense. Yeah, but they haven't. They didn't score in three quarters against the Raiders. They they were given were given massive opportunity. That's true. By bad officiating to get by the Lions. I I don't think this is a juggernaut team like they've been in the past. I think they have flaws. I would love to take all of these points. I I will I will I've, I've been a Colts guy this whole year. Yeah, yeah. Last week they busted me. Last week is the first week they've busted me. They've covered every other week. I absolutely think they'll cover a double digit line this week. You uh are you going to take the uh the Colts out, right? I don't know about that. That's that's like a the crazy. the Chiefs record I don't know that it's outside of the realm of possibility. I, I saw somewhere the Chiefs' record on Sunday night is like atrocious, but I, but this is a different team. I don't know so, that that like I said is, that's, that's a little weird. Yeah, is Darius Leonard going to play? Because that makes a mess. I mean, that's that's a huge difference to that Colts defense. I mean, you're talking first team All Pro as a rookie last year. If Darius Leonard's able to play, that changes things for Indianapolis. At least at least it changes for their defense. I when we record seen. this on Tuesday. I, I'm, I'm certain he's probably be questionable right no now. No information that we're going to find now that'll that'll help us for what's going to actually happen. Let's see. This is fantastic radio, of course. No, but I, I don't I don't think there's any way anything we see yeah, today they, yeah, will you, be worthless come yeah, Sunday. Yeah, it's, you, he's going to be one of those where you got to watch Jay Glazer on Fox or that's it. Or Adam yeah, Schefter and Chris Morton Sunday, on Sunday, Sunday NFL morning, countdown. You're yeah, have to when, get that information. yeah, they'll be they'll be having it. So. I so mean, yeah, that's that's a big part of it. Um, let's see, concussion. He is that was at, that was for the Raiders game. Yeah, he yeah, that was the Raiders, the Raiders game. game but then concuss- so, concuss- yeah, and then it's a concussion too. So you you don't know that could be. I mean, yeah. typically, yeah, you're not going to find out about that until Sunday. For me, um, I, I know the over under went down to fifty six and a half. It, it was open to fifty seven, went down to fifty six and a half pretty yep. quick. I think it will continue to drop. I jump on the under at fifty six and a half right now, and I know it's tricky taking unders in Chiefs Colts game. I told Gary about this. I saw last year in the NFL, 
every total that was in the 50s that come Sunday when the lines close and the totals in the 50s, 62% of those ended up going under. So yeah, that I, just ride, I just ride with it. It's hard to score in the NFL. The Chiefs make it look easier than just about anybody has ever done. But it is tough to score in the NFL. Right. When it's that high of a number, I'll just take the under blindly. Whatever. I, uh, I'm going to take the Colts as well. I'll take the Chiefs to win outright. But I, uh, I do like the fact that that is a ton of points. 11 points in the NFL. And, this and is you're not the look. Dolphins. This is this is not you know the the Washington Redskins. This is yeah. this is not yeah. one of those bad football. Teams. Most NFL games are decided between, around one score. That's, That's right. what yeah. they most most of them are. Yeah. Let's see. All right. So let's move into. If I had to play it, I'd play the Colts. I'd, t- I'd take all those. Take the under. Points. Yeah. I yeah. take I take the eleven points too. If I had to play that side, I can get down with that. All right. Monday night football, and I'll let you two have at this one. The Cleveland <laughs> Browns at the San Francisco 49ers. It is a matchup of. You two guys' teams. The 49ers, a a three-and-a-half point favorite at home. 46-and-a-half is the total. 7.15 p.m. ESPN Levi Stadium in beautiful, kind of small, Santa Clara, California. Yeah. Look, the the key to this game, honestly, I mean, look, they're going to have to get the ball out of Baker Mayfield's hand. Baker Mayfield's going to have to get rid of the ball quick. There have been numbers on that showing he's way better when he gets rid of the ball fast. Um because the the forty ers pass rush is real. It's it's oh, yeah. legit. Where they could not rush the passer at all last year. They go out, they sign D four, they draft Nick Bosa to go and help DeForest Buckner, who's there in the middle, and it's been a night and day difference. The pass rush is legit. Uh, losing a kilo Weatherspoon in the uh, Weatherspoon in the uh, in the secondary is not great for the 49ers. They lost him against the Steelers. They brought in Jason Verrett to take his place, and Verrett got burned on two straight plays, and then he got benched. So they're not going to have Witherspoon, and when you've got Landry and you got Odell Beckham to deal with. Well, is Landry playing? Landry should be okay. But, I, okay. I mean, he's, he's questionable also. But once again, any of the injury stuff, unless somebody's yeah. out, yeah. there's no way to know. We do this so early in the week so we can get this stuff out. When injury report doesn't have to come out until – what? It won't come out until Wednesday or Thursday. I think yeah, I think it's Thursday. So we're so, so. we're we're behind the eight ball anyway. Um, how do you feel about your brownies taking the trip across the, uh, across I, the country? I, I I really like the Browns a lot, and the reason being is a this defense. I think they're one of the top five defenses in the NFL. I, I think that they can shut down or slow down everybody. Jimmy G has struggled throwing the football to the other team. This isn't a team you want to give opportunities to because their offense. Unless they can run the football on you, their offense is not going to put together massive, sustainable drives. But they are big play offense and with a bad secondary. That's one thing that – now, I – the 49ers are built the way I would build a team if I was a general manager. We've talked about this. If I yeah. had all the money in the world to spend oh, yeah. and I had to be short on something, it's secondary, which drives me crazy because the two – football geniuses that I follow and know in the world are Bill Belichick and Nick Saban, and they put their best players at secondary, I would rather have a pass <laughs> rush. Give me a front seven, yeah. and I will let them be the secondary. Because the quarterback, I don't, they don't have to be open. They can be open yeah. all they want. Quarterback can't throw from his yeah. ass. And, and so that that's my philosophy. That makes me a little worried, but it's going to be a thing where if he can hit quick slants, then Odell is going to run wild. The thing I like most about what the Browns did at the Ravens and, and why I feel so much better coming off of that game as opposed to what I saw with the Rams was Odo Beckham had almost no catches. He was not involved in the game hardly at all. And the entire time he was fist pumping, he was excited. He was happy for his teammates even though he wasn't getting the ball. We assume he's a guy that if he don't get his catches – He's going to cause problems, and he seems to just rather have fun. And, and, and if we're winning and I'm having a good time, he's okay. I think you reward that, and I think you're, it's a bad secondary. you got to get the hand out quick, the ball out quick. It's going to go to him and Chubb. That, that's going to be the offenses. Snap the football, throw it to the back, or snap the football and hit Odell in, in a screen and a slant. And let them run. Yeah, they're they're gonna. I, I think a lot of quick slants. I think you're gonna see those. The linebacker play for the 49ers, which has been pretty good this year. Now, last year, uh, they they had one of the more underrated rookies, Fred Warner. They got out of BYU in the third round. Turned out to be a really good player, which they needed because Reuben Foster just went. 
fault. <laughs> Banana. Great, yeah, your yep. Bama guy just went insane. Um, and it comes after I like like yeah. a year or two before where Chris Borland had a great rookie year and then he <laughs> retired. Who like the 49ers have hit on some of these linebacker picks, but do they either go insane or they just retire? Uh, Fred Warner and then the signing of Quan Alexander. Um, you know, Quan's a guy who's had injury issues, but when he plays, he's really good, and he's been really good so far. And yet, the 49ers front seven, it is going to be. I mean, it's it to me, it's it's that, de- and it's also it's the defensive line of the 49ers against the offensive line of the Browns, and it's the defensive line of the Browns against the offensive line of the 49ers yeah. because that that is one thing about Garoppolo throwing the picks. If you watch that Steelers game, both of those picks he threw. I mean, dude, he had no time. Like, no. The Steelers were on, and they because the 49ers lost their left tackle, Joe Staley, yep. to the to the broken fibula or whatever. So he's done uh, for probably the he's done for the season. Um, like that, that is everything. They got to be able to protect him when they protect him. He's still good for one throw a game. Where you're like, what in the world? But like those two picks in the Steelers games were like, I I, I don't really put those on him. I'm like, dude, you guys like he literally. Ball snapped and boom, they're in his face, and it's like, oh god, like I got to get rid of the ball. So I, imagine the uh, imagine the Colts offensive line with either of these teams. I mean, that, that's oh yeah, Super Bowl oh, oh no, 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 oh, no, no that is that. Uh, if the Browns had the Colts offensive line with their defense, that yeah, no, that there's nobody beating them. There yeah. really is nobody beating them. Yeah, I think uh, Nick, Nick right. Chubb is one of the scariest running backs in all of football. Yeah, Miles yeah. Garrett scares the crap out of me. Oh yeah, Monday night. I love that man. scares I me. Love, I mean, he terrifies I, me. I haven't loved somebody like him since he is. God, since, he's a monster. Since maybe Reggie White. I mean, that's yeah. You want to talk about somebody that was mad that he couldn't find a prop to put down on on defense? Nowhere play the year. in Tunica. Nowhere in Tunica could I find. But nowhere a bet. anywhere. You couldn't even yeah. find one online where I can bet him to win MVP, win over his sack totals. None of this stuff. There's there's only certain sports books in Vegas and certain places you can get it. Nobody around here, nobody yeah. online. Well, like West better. Westgate probably had it. I'm yeah, sure. but I guarantee you, Westgate. Westgate has Westgate has every, Westgate and South Point have yeah. everything. Yep. Now you got that right. Um, all right, so I mean, are we making picks? I, I I'm not touching it. I, okay. I, I don't I don't I'm like betting. The points. I, I don't like betting on my. I don't like betting on or against my team. <laughs> I, t- I I I played the under in one 49ers game this year was the Bucks game, the first game of the season, and that one actually like worked. It, the, the under hit. It was it was the total was 51. Yeah, playing those yep. numbers, I went under, and the under hit. He I, I'm, will I'm gonna, always play his team. I'm not afraid oh. of playing my team, um, and, and I love that they're getting points. I just love that I'm getting and, I, and I'm getting more than a field goal. I, I'm good with that. It's, I, I think I'm going to roll with the uh, the Browns as well. You'll like this for stats. I, I would say there's not much of a home field advantage where the Niners. Oh no, there's going to be plenty of Cleveland folks. I know people that are yeah. going to. I'm just saying it's that stadium. I mean that stadium's yeah. just not loud. It's it's San Francisco. That's not a football town. As a home favorite. One and seventeen against the spread in their last eighteen. Well, they've also sucked. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was, oh, yeah. This is why I don't yeah. like these stats is because yeah, yeah. all the teams before like, we today, haven't been good. We haven't been good, but yes. but they didn't suck bad enough to not be a favorite. So like, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. I, it doesn't matter. I'm with you, but Thomas also that's why I took garbage. the Steelers a couple of weeks ago. Like that's that's what I'm saying. Last game of the Big Five. Where are we? Uh, we are at the Bills and the Titans. This is a big Titans. game. Bills. Right. This is a pretty big game. It's a big game. Bills. <laughs> Marcus Mariota is the only quarterback in the league who hasn't turned the ball over. That's changing this week. Now. That's changing this week. Mariota is going to turn it over two or three times this week. Buffalo's am, got this. I am convinced that the Titans could go 10-6 and six this year and lose every division game and win all the other ones. I really think that that's because they have looked fantastic outside of the division. And then they get in the division against what seems to be weaker teams, and they look like complete dog crap. A, those teams aren't weaker. There's not a team in the division that's that's worse than the Atlanta Falcons. I, I agree. I agree. And then beat up on the Brownies. Yes. Um, it was a bad football team. England. The Jags game... That one, I, I will never bet on this team ever again. That's and right. I said this a few weeks ago when I lost so much damn money on them the first I bet time. On them. I loved it. I, yeah, you you did last week. You had, had money you picked on them in the right spot. Yeah, but not me. Like I, I I will, I'm I'm a roll Bills here, just because of spite. Okay. But this defense, I, I'm, I'm curious what the offense is going to look like with Matt Barkley, with. And obviously, he has started before. He's got plenty of experience. 
I'm just curious what they're going to do on the road with him under center. If the, and it, has that been ruled out? Is Josh Allen completely out? Do that you know? doesn't matter. And, and it, I don't know the answer to that. I'm going to tell you, we're, we're all going the to The offense same. is going to be the same thing, right? Yes, the offense won't change a whole lot. But they will it's, lose. It's, it's not like Josh Allen's good. They will, <laughs> lose, they will lose the explosive plays because Josh Allen can take the top off the defense like nobody else, but, but they will get better in all the accurate underneath stuff. Okay, they'll be open in the middle of the field, all that stuff. I'm, I'm going with the Bills. This Bills defense, that's the third best defense in the country. I, I, after you get by them, there's a couple of teams that have really good defense. Packers, Cowboys, Saints, all really good. I respect them all. The, the hierarchy of defense is as clear as I've ever seen in my life. The Bears defense might be one of the best I've ever seen. The, the Patriots defense is, is, is literally this much smaller <laughs> and don't have any of the names. Okay? And then that Bills defense is right there, and this team is going to play with their asshole on fire. The coming out after being that close, riding with the Pats the entire way, they were in that game. I I think they're going to make Marcus look. They made Tom look confused and pissed oh, off yeah. and frustrated. And angry. it'll be bad. They're going to make Mar- He's exactly right. Yeah. That's a kiss of death that everybody's talked about all week. He hasn't. He's the only quarterback that hasn't turned the ball over yet. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you very much. You made it four weeks and you did that. That's awesome. But it, but the the buck ends here. I the think buck I here. think it stops here, and I think the Bills win this game. I could uh I could believe it. Oh no, I I grab Bills money line. I grab it if you whatever yeah. whatever the it's, number it's is. It's going to be I short, and right it. now I don't even have it on on where I'm. Yeah, it's only a three point spread, so but, it is yeah. going to be short. You're looking at two and a half to three point line, so the money line won't be great. But plus anyway. uh plus one forty plus one thirty five somewhere around there. Okay. Yeah, which is that's not nothing. No, no that's no, not no, nothing. That's more than I thought it would be actually. That's uh, that's pretty crazy. All right, let's move into the can't, rapid I fire. Was, I thought it'd be like plus 105, 110 or something. Yeah. Rapid fire segment, Bears at the Raiders. Oh, who cares? I'm, well, I'm <laughs> curious. Once, once again, we're going to cover 10 games. That's it. <laughs> of the 15 games we're playing. We got five other ones. Let me just get through it. The Bears and the Raiders is interesting. Uh, the, the, Ra- the under on the Raiders point total, whatever it is. <laughs> I'll, I'll take I that. Need, I need the Raiders to get beat. I've got under six and a half wins on the season. And this is only that calls when you didn't you expect. Have a specific bet. No, there are Chicago fans and Raiders fans. Yes, I'm a Patriots everywhere. fan, but there's no reason to talk about the Pats this week. Well, I thought the, you were a Browns fan. We're not going to have this conversation. He's a he's a two teamer. John John and I don't know each other. John and I don't know each other well enough to have this conversation. <laughs> we'll have this conversation later. Yeah, we'll we'll talk. Yeah, we'll talk about okay. this. Uh, so, Bears Chase Daniel. I'm curious what they're going to look like. I think they're actually going to look better. Their offense is going to look the exact same because the quarterback does not matter. Khalil Mack is a monster. Roquan Smith is a monster, and they are going to destroy the Raiders. They don't, with Roquan, they don't know if he's going to play yet. I don't, um, I, don't know, I don't know what the offense is going to do. I know this. The Raiders won't score. They might, yeah, kick, that's some a, I, they the, might kick some field goals. They whatever the Raiders' point total is, take the under. Now, the take problem the is their point total may be like eight and a half. <laughs> it, <laughs> that, might, it might be <laughs> single digits. Yeah. yeah. All right, next one up, Ravens at the Steelers. This one actually got a little more interesting because of the Steelers winning on Monday night. The Ravens, 2-2 two and two right now. Uh, not looking as good as they did in the first two weeks of the season. They drop back down. The Steelers at 1-3, and three, only one game out of the lead in the division, and this is always a nasty, nasty ball game. Is this a spot against that Steelers defensive line where Lamar Jackson can actually get right, or does he look worse than he has the last couple of weeks. See, I, it's, this is the thing. See, I'm, I'm glad the Ravens are actually two and two now. Um, like really glad because I was on the train before this. I'm like, dude, Lamar Jackson ain't that good. And then he just made me eat those. God, the first two weeks of the season. We did the same thing. But that Chiefs game, dude, he literally two throws in that game. We're jump throws. Balls. Oh, they were horrible throws. But because they were caught, everybody's like, oh, Lamar Jackson. I'm like, dude, if those passes should have been intercepted. I would like to, I would like to totally introduce different. you to somebody who everyone's going to say is a sure, he, he is a surefire Hall of Famer named Aaron Rodgers. Because if you look at 80% of his big throws, they're literally, he just runs around, runs around, runs around, and he throws the ball up, and they're just jump balls, and his guys just come down with them all the time, and we talk about how incredible he is at throwing a Hail Mary pass. It's a Hail Mary. I don't know why he's like 70% with them, but if you give him credit, you got to give Lamar credit. Yeah. Because that's 80% of their offense is Aaron Rodgers 
throwing the ball up in the air and hoping his guy comes down with it, and his guy usually does. I don't know if that means he's better. I, I can't explain. Oh it no, 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 that's no, no, no. I will say if 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 Lamar Jackson does this. Over the course of ten seasons, yes, I'll be like, "Oh my god, yeah, the dude's just good. He yeah. heaves these things up, and they just see his team catches it every time." But when you've only been when you've only been starting since week well, eleven of last year, right. I'm I'm gonna say I'm gonna say maybe there's a little BS to it, and there's gonna be some there's gonna be a comeback down moment where those passes are gonna start getting picked off. Now, if he is Aaron Rodgers and he does complete seventy percent of them for the next five yeah. years, then I'll be like. Now this dude's just really fortunate, really lucky, and he but gets that, these. But that means that means you were a loser all five years. You were betting against him or picking against him. I'm on the Lamar Truther train. I'm gonna preach the, the the Church of Lamar until I'm proven wrong. I think he's really good at football. I, I watched him in college. I thought he was incredible at football. Then I think he's incredible now. I think they go into Pittsburgh. I think they beat the Steelers. I think Lamar gets right. That's a, and. and he is one of those quarterbacks that can, he's not a statue. I, I also believe that the Steelers are getting way overvalued, even though they're three, three and a half point dogs at home because they just beat up on the Bengals. Yeah. Lots of teams it. have beat up on bad teams, and then the next week we think they're incredible. Yeah, That's I true. think I think there's value with I think Baltimore this week. There's we with that line Baltimore being like get that. Thrashed. I I mean I'd I'd probably buy the half point to three and take Baltimore, yeah. you know. Yeah, I can believe that. Uh, you probably find it at three because yeah. I'm going to bet a lot of people are going to be buying the Steelers. So. Yeah, and you're probably right. There's a lot um, of Steelers fans. A lot of people like to bet on the Steelers. Currently, it is well, it's three and a half across the board right now. Yeah, but uh, but give it time. Give yeah. it time. Next up, Falcons at the Texans. I'm only curious oh. about this because it matters. What to is you? no? What is going on? <laughs> <laughs> it's the Gary Seager show. Hey, I Benson. love Deshaun. We, I love Deshaun Watson, man. But that team, can, that offensive line, can I protect him for crap? Yeah, um, that's that's where I'm going with this. Like, this should this should be. If you looked at this game before the season, you'd think that's going to be a fun NFL game. These Falcons, Texans, like they're going to score. Yeah. These teams are going to this. This is going to be a 35-28 game, a 34-27 game. And this this one may be lucky if if any team breaks like 24 points. Right. Like I mean, Matt Ryan is back to. Just not being not very MVP good. numbers. Statistically, yeah. he had his best game in a long time last week. Zero touchdowns. Yeah, which is just bananas. Yeah, he, I, he ain't the, he ain't the same without uh, old Kyle Shanahan there with him, is he? I mean, it's no. a, it's a, it's amazing that since Kyle's left, this team is exactly five hundred. Oh, oh no, they were last week, so they're one game under five hundred. They were nineteen and nineteen since. Kyle yeah, Dan, Dan Quinn may lose the, his if he loses. Give him about two more losses in a row, and he may be looking for another job. And they may. I was going to ask, is which one a, of these guys gets is, fired first? Is this a loser least town match? See, interesting match. Oh, yeah, God. I don't know See? that that means they're interesting. <laughs> Before the season started, I will tell you, I feel so much better about this. We we do a preview of all thirty two teams, and we give an over under for all of them. We got a little sheet that we print out with the whole schedule, and I picked all winners and losers for every game. And I looked at it when I was done, and everybody I listened to said, Falcons are going to be a playoff team. Falcons are going to be a playoff team. And after I was finished, I had the Falcons being 4-12. and 12. And I was like, all right, I need to reevaluate my process because they might not be a playoff team, but they ain't 4-12. and 12. They might be 4-12. Maybe they I was four right. And yeah, I should have thrown that sheet away. They might be a 4-12 and 12 football team. Yeah, they – I couldn't believe that, that that loss to the Titans the other day. I mean, that – there were a couple games that I think people got where the books cash in big time in Vegas, and it was the Raiders oh, yeah. beating the Colts and the the Titans, the Titans beating the Falcons straight up. Those, those two straight up wins. Well, I, I really those enjoy the, the Titans money. It's it, it just it just feels so good putting it in my wallet. But, I, I I don't I, I'll roll with the Texans because the Falcons have been yeah that bad, and I'll trust. And I think Deshaun's better than Matt Ryan. This game sucks. But DeAndre Hopkins it's, and Julio, will, look, those I are two of the best to do I will watch it. one second of this football game. It's a Bill, Bill O'Brien coaching against Dan Quinn could be uh, that's the entertaining. incompetent bowl. Yeah, that's entertaining on so many levels. Uh, Bucks at the Saints. Division matchup, two two and two teams. The Tampa Bay usually plays well there. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm I'm curious. I don't know what to make of this Tampa Bay team. I won't touch this game at all. Oh, no, oh, no. this game, yeah, yeah, this game's a total stay I away. Touch, I won't touch this game at all. If if Tampa rolled in there and beat them by 20, it would not shock me. No. And if the Saints shut Tampa Bay down and Tampa does not score, it would not shock me. No, same here. 
I, like, I, I fully expect Jameis to get back to throwing interceptions. Yes. There's no outcome yeah. that would surprise me in this game. Oh, if, they, if, they, if that week. Saints defense plays like it did last this past week against Dallas, or they play oh. like that against Tampa Bay, Jameis is throwing picks. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's happening. All right, and last one, another division game, uh, and I bring it up just for our Westlake Pirates boys. The Broncos at the Chargers. Bradley Chubb is out. Uh, the Chargers obviously have dealt with the injury bug all year. Oh, they're not feeling sorry for losing Bradley Chubb. No. Um, no but, should. man, like, is there a – obviously there's a lot of bad quarterbacks in the league right now. None worse than Joe Flacco. I mean, Joey Flaccid is – Man, he sucks. Terrible. Yeah, he's bad. And I, Case Keenum is head and shoulders better than him, and they had him on the roster, and they said, you know what, I'll take a fifth-round pick, and you can have Case Washington. We'd rather have that fifth-round pick or whatever the pick is. It wasn't a great one, and we'll roll with Joe Flacco. I will say I do have um, Emmanuel Sanders on my fantasy team, and I, I, he's actually been pretty good for me because, I mean, it's the only guy Joe Flacco throws to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, he's, all their numbers. he's one of the only real true professionals on that team. I mean, yeah. he's just been in the league. He knows how to get open. He knows how to catch trash passes um, and when he's got to. Uh, this is a bad football team. Now, with all that being said, I, I have followed the Chargers closer than most teams. I really like the Chargers. I've liked them for a long time. This is a game the Chargers, whenever it is, they can't lose this game. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is absolutely a game the Chargers yeah. can and there's a really good chance we'll lose. Yeah, and I don't remember. I heard the number last week. I was listening to it, and I heard the number last week. But it's like, dude, the Chargers are not good covering at home. Well, no, I don't. Yeah, I, I there's no way you. I'd low. I'd, I'd I'd lay six and a half points. No, that's just. Oh, a, to a, me, you buy it up to you buy you buy the hook, buy it to seven, seven yeah. and then take Denver. Yeah, I mean that's that's the best way to go about it, right? Yeah, because yeah. you don't want to get beat with a touchdown. You don't want it to be. Yeah. I can see I made that mistake, and we'll get to college, but I made that mistake in LSU, Texas. I had Texas plus the six and a half, and I made the biggest mistake in the world. I was like, oh, my God, why did I not buy that to seven? At least at least I would have got my money back. Let's see. The Chargers as a home favorite. They are 7-12-1 and one in their last 20. Yeah. They are, wow, and it's even worse, really, just in the last, yeah. I mean, it's they're... Oh three and one the last four um, at home covering against the they, they've only covered two of the last ten as a yeah. home favorite. Yeah, I mean so that 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 does scream by the half point to seven. Well, take there'll Denver. be a ton of Denver fans there. We know that. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean so, the stadium only seats like twenty thousand people. I'm, it's like uh, FedEx Forum. I'm I'm curious about I that Broncos team has looked so inept. Yeah. I wonder if if Fangio kind of pulls a Steve Wilkes and and gets fired after one year. After like, one year, dude, so, he may get fired after eight games. That's yeah. so bad for – defensive coaches are better than this. They are. They deserve these jobs. You, you can't give a guy Joe Flacco and say, why aren't you winning? This is a John Elway problem. This roster is not good. I, hey. Oh, what? I, well, I heard the numbers. Uh, John Elway with Peyton Manning. I think the Broncos record was like 51-17 and 17 without Peyton Manning, 21-25. and 25. Yeah. But half of that roster, 80% of that roster, was built by somebody else. Peyton Manning got there the year John Elway got there. So, so, what, so he didn't build that roster that Peyton yeah. took over. Well, it, the other thing, too, look at look at the players that Elway has drafted. Um, the guys that he's been good at drafting have been defensive players, and I and I heard this theory and the reason. He, he drafted Von Miller. Congratulations. He drafted Bradley Chubb. Um, what is what has Chubb done? Well, Ch- Hell, Chubb, Chubb, Chubb might be a bust. Good. Uh, Chubb's we not a Bradley, he, Bradley we, Chubb's not a bust. We think he's good. We Bradley think Chubb's, he's good. Uh, yeah, Bradley Chubb's not a bust. That, that, that guy can play. I, I would have taken Roquan over him. I made that <laughs> well, that's clear. Right. Roquan Smith is awesome, so I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to argue I that. Roquan I Roquan number one overall because – but because he's a boss, like. <laughs> but no, he's he's he's, he's had he's had some good defenses there, and I I heard the the thing was the, the the thing this guy brought up was said, why has John Elway been good at drafting defensive players but not offensive players? And he, and they said, well, think about it. He spent his entire football career studying defenses, so he like uh, knows what good defensive players I, look I think, like. I think but he clearly of, doesn't know about quarterbacks. I think coming out of college, they're just easier to evaluate. I, yeah, I could do that. I yeah. I think I on the couch knew. That Roquan Smith was going to be a stud. Like I, I, I don't do this for a living. I, you know, that, that's just. I think they're easier to evaluate. Guess what? You don't get paid to do the easy shit. 
you got to be able to do the hard stuff. You yeah. just have to. Yeah. This is why I'm vehemently against ever hiring a hero to do anything. You're a Memphis guy. You work for Grand City Media. Listen, we I, never, never do we ever need to bring Mike Conley back to do anything other than wave to the crowd. I, I do not care yeah. if he wants to become a coach. No, he doesn't coach here because he can only hurt their legacy. It can't ever end well. Yeah, he I mean, won a Super look, Bowl, and he's still going to go down as this tarnishing his legacy. Well, I think that people are still going to love him for for like what he did on the I field. I get that, but it's it's still going to. I didn't say it was going to destroy it, but it's still going to tarnish it. It is yeah. going to hurt the way people see him. Uh, you you probably right. Well, there are kids that have grown up and they only know John Elway as the Denver Broncos executive. That's right. They don't know him as the quarterback legend. That's true. That's true. They love him because Daddy loved him. Yeah. I mean, you, you got you got all valid it's, points here. It's just a bad idea. With that being said, Broncos might win this game. I was, <laughs> I'm going to be so pissed off. I'm going to play the Chargers because that's just what I do. It, Broncos probably going to win this game outright. It's going to piss me off. I could I could believe that. Joe Flacco's going to throw three touchdowns. All right, that is done? going that is uh, that is wrapping up the NFL preview show for week number five. Uh, as always, go over to winningcureseverything.com. Make sure you hit us up on all of our social media channels, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, etc. All those things. Go over to tunicatravel.com, Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They've got six incredible sports books. Go over to the website, find more information about all the cool things they're doing down in the Delta. We'll see you guys again next time. Checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.